down at uh, on West Grinch, Grinshaw. And uh, if you want to uh, get together, anybody out there who knows some uh, graduates, Sharon Heisen, our neighbor and activist, is uh, putting together a list for an upcoming re reunion. And you can reach her at Sharon Heisen, that's S-H-A-R-O-N-H-Y-S-O-N, at gmail.com. And uh, uh, good luck, because I know some graduates from that school as well. Really good, good school. I don't think we need a break, do you, Michael? All right, we're not taking that musical. Yeah, we should have, just give, just give us a little mu background oh. music so we set the tone. Because okay. we're going out here to Pine Ridge in uh, South Dakota. Right and uh, let's hear it, and we could talk over it for a minute. <laughs> All right, so our next guests are some people who we've uh, gotten to know recently and are really honored to know them. Uh, we, um, we are welcoming Salvatore Con Consalve, I called you something else earlier, I apologize, and Bridget Timmerman. Good morning to the two of you. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, thank you. Welcome. How did, you, uh, you. How did Michael reach out to you? Folks, or vice versa. How did we find out about each other? Uh, I actually reached out to Michael, and uh, I was with Salvatore, and I said we should stop by this place called the Heartland Cafe. And I'm, I've only been in Chicago 13 years, but S Salvatore is a lifelong Chicago resident, and he could not believe he's never heard of the Heartland Cafe. I can't either. <laughs> That's because he was spending his summers or winters, I don't know how it works, in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah. They check, check this out. Eight years this guy's been going to Antarctica. Tell us about that before we go to Pine Ridge. Well, uh, We should have him on for another show for that. Uh, he, yeah, we'll, we'll work on that. Uh, I am doing a documentary on Antarctica. So that's how we met, actually. We met in film classes at Chicago Filmmakers. Oh, wow. While I was working on a, a documentary on remote field camps that I worked at. Um, so over eight years, you, you get a, a skill set that allows you to manage these tiny little field camps and spend three months with three other people and living in tents on the ice and everything. And, and uh, so I came back with all this footage from there. And uh, Bridget invited, invited me out to the Pine Ridge. What she didn't know was that I had also been researching Lakota and Native Americans since I got out of college. Huh. Um, and Perfect. Was doing actually in Antarctica every every morning. I would do a, a four direction meditation, pretty much stolen from the Lakota. Uh, I think I only told her that like We're recently. She only knew that recently. Um, so she asked me, and I we went out. And the interesting thing about it was that I I didn't know what to expect. It, you know, Sydney could have been a you know, a, a powwow leader, he could have been a... That Sydney Has No Horses, who yeah. is the focus of the documentary these two are making. Yeah, yes. and I did switch subjects back onto this conversation. I was talking about Antarctica. Enough Antarctica. No, no, Enough Antarctica. 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 <laughs> Too cold. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Suffice it to say, you still have all your fingers and toes. <laughs> yeah, a little, I almost lost a little piece of my cheek once, but that's... Yikes. That was my fault. You know. uh. But, uh... But we, we went out and uh, I had no idea what to expect. He could have been, uh, you know, just sort of a, a, a tourist attraction. I didn't know what to expect. And we, we filmed him that first time. We sat him down and he spoke for an hour. Sat on this little metal chair and he told us his entire history so eloquently Fair. that we, we turned to each other and said, we got to do a, we can do a full documentary on this guy, feature length. Did you film that first talk? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's part of our trailer. Oh, Most of our trailer has the... Comes uh, from that comes meeting. Comes from that meeting. Yeah. That's terrific. Now, you, now, let's hear your story. Bridget, Bridget grew up right on the... Oh, nearby to, the res. Next to the yes, res. Yes, um, I'm from a third generation cow ranching family. My father's owned a ranch that borders the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation since the early 70s. And uh, I, I just found it amazing that uh, I grew up so close to such an interesting and rich uh, culture 
and knew very little about it. Uh, my father's known Sydney for many years, and I met Sydney back in 2009. And then Sydney invited me to a sweat ceremony, which was very intense with his whole group, and then invited me to a Sundance the following summer. And I jumped at the chance. And when I met Salvatore, I asked him if he'd like to go to the sweat ceremony, or I'm sorry, the Sundance. And he said, absolutely. So yeah. that's how, how it was started when we met in, at would Chicago you, would Filmmakers. Would either of you set the tone for what Pine Ridge is like? Because those of us who go back far enough the, during the uh, American Indian Movement uh, activities on Pine Ridge, and we know that uh, there was a feature movie that w has uh, John Trudell in it. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the name of that flick? But there's it's a, it kind of documents. Yeah, there's Real Engine. He's in a couple of them. And, uh, there's one on Leonard Peltier yeah. incident at Ogallala. Yeah, but there, there's also a, a guy who played someone, uh, I don't remember the actor. Thunderheart? Thunderheart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thunderheart Thunder. really uh, sort of gives you the Is sense. Is Val of, Kilmer? Uh, yeah, Val Kilmer. And they, the goons that were on the reservation uh, that are just coming to some attention now for. Uh, Americans uh, learn their history missing by movies. Dead people on the res was in the New York Times the other day. Uh, mm -hmm. Set, the, set the, the picture for us what Pine Ridge is like. Well, I can start off that uh, the Pine Ridge is one of the poorest, most violent areas of the United States. Um, I can only say driving through the Pine, Pine Ridge itself, the town, and the whole reservation, uh, you absolutely know you're on the reservation because of the poverty and, uh, and the sheer you know, devastation when Which you're is driving true through. of many reservations mm -hmm. at this yeah. point. Yeah, Pine Ridge is probably the most dramatic yeah. war. Yes, uh -huh. yes, absolutely. How would it compare to Rosebud? I mean... I know Rosebud has uh, quite a, has a successful casino. Um, it seems to be more developed than the Pine Ridge. Sal and I have only driven through it a few times, uh, but most of our time has been primarily on the Pine Ridge. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did you, did you decide to make a movie right after that conversation with Stanley, or what um, was the process? Sydney. Well, yeah, actually, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I had assumed that Sydney was just tolerating his friend's daughter and this spiritual <laughs> tourist that showed up from Chicago. You know, uh -huh. I, I didn't think that he would put up with us <laughs> for as long as he has. <laughs> um, yeah, but we, what we decided was to put that offer out there and say, hey, you know, uh, would you like us to come back again? And he was uh, very open to it. Um, and uh, once you've been around Sydney uh, a while, he um, communes with the spirits, his spirit world, his ancestors constantly. And I guess they, they said that these people could get it done. You know, they're very uh, used to people coming in and paying, paying a lot of attention and lip service and, and not getting anything done. Uh -huh. um, and I guess uh, he decided that we could actually finish something. Uh, so he, he kept inviting us back. So he, a few weeks later, he invited us back. We've, we've gone back to really capture his life. Um, because as a medicine man, uh, he accepts only a pouch of tobacco for a healing. Right. right. Um, he, so he's very traditional. And that's what I found that first time. Uh, so he makes a living in the poorest place in the country as a carpenter, uh, hauling wood. Um, he needs a lot of support to, to keep those Sundances going every year. Um, so we did that, he hunts, and when he hunts, um, you know, we've got a great hunting sequence in the film. Uh, and it's, you know, not bow and arrow or anything, it's a modern hunting system and uh, driving trucks and, and so forth. But then he turns around and he does a very heartfelt uh, blessing for the animal. Right. Um, and it, it is very real. But he needs that to make it through this in the winter. So when right. they go hunt, they actually eat, the, eat it. Let's, uh, let me get a little background on the Sundance itself. Because if, uh, if we go back into the history of the Lakota uh, and the U.S. Uh, conquering of uh, tribes, uh, one of the things they did was to try to destroy the native religions. And there was a, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure it was the Sundance, but it might have been there was something similar which was sort of yeah. sweeping the, the native communities and uh, the, the government outlawed that. And I, somewhere in my mind I'm thinking that they sort of started to come back around the AIM time, they started to do these. That's the American Indian movement. To fill me in and correct me where I'm wrong. 
I think he's talking about the ghost dance. The, the ghost, ghost dance, dance yeah, yeah. yeah. but, but it's actually it's very sort of a similar. Deal. It's, it's very related. Um, uh, they the the Sundance was very out there and open. They knew about the Sundance, and it uh, it's about suffering for the community, and it's where they do the piercings, um, and they still do traditional piercings at Sydney's and and, and many of them on the on the reservation. Um, so it looks like a war dance, um, but really it's about suffering for the community. And uh, when Wavoka was the, uh, a prophet came along and uh, had a vision uh, that if we did this ghost dance, which looks quite like uh, the Sundance, uh, that uh, it would, there'd be a turn, uh, tides would turn, and uh, white people would have their day a little earlier. Uh, and uh, the red, the red people would take over their country again. You know, so, and the, the theory was if they got a pan-Indian movement, uh, they didn't use that term back then. But uh, if they all started to do this ghost dance, yeah. um, that the tides would turn and they would get their their land back. Um, so, the the United States government wanted nothing to do with that. It looked like a ghost dance, and I I do think s some thought that uh, uh, believed in the spiritual power of the Native American. So they, they completely outlawed uh, all of it, you know, and then started breaking, trying to break the back of the culture in many, many different ways, uh, including the killing of the buffalo, which um, as part of the suffering in the Sundance, it's really a, a, a hunting, uh, giving back to the Buffalo Nation as well. Yeah. So uh, the Sundance actually was given to them by the Buffalo Nation, as a as a way to, you know, of reciprocity to pay back for living off of the buffalo. All right. Um, uh, you you two met at uh, Chicago Filmmakers. It was a screenwriting class or a, a documentary, documentary lab film? class. Yeah. Yes. And uh, what do you hope to accomplish with your film? Uh, Sydney has no horses. What is your goal as uh, documentary filmmakers uh, living in 2012? Well, I, I can start off with. Uh, I, I hope to show something that most Americans are unaware of. Uh, a lot of Americans aren't really aware of how n modern Native Americans live. And we're showing the modern Native Americans live uh, with their indigenous religion. Mm -hmm. And it, at this time, you know, I think it's interesting that she, she was, um, uh, more interested in those cultural factors and, and brought in by cultural factors. Uh, I'd also like to work in that, uh, you know, the aspects of an indigenous religion. What actually is an indigenous religion? And um, the fact that intrigued me, what intrigued me the most was that this is a, a, a community living an indigenous religion in the corporate age. And um, very, very much struggling to do so. Um, and very much holding on to a, a, a right-brained, holistic mindset. So, um, how, how does it play out on the reservation? I would imagine that there were Catholic missionaries there. Oh, uh, yes. There's probably still a Catholic church presence. There's probably some other religions. How does it, do some people go for any and all religion? Do some people, uh, uh, is there some, you know, differences between folks and uh, separation? Mm -hmm. Well, my first Sundance uh, I went to when Sydney invited me, I met a lot of people on the reservation and asked them what they practice. And a lot of times what I would see that they would either be strictly Christian or they would practice both. Um, I know Sydney strictly follows the, the Red Road, which is the Lakota Native American tradition. Um, but it, it's very interesting how they accept Christianity and the Red Road as the two religions that they choose to follow. Uh, not unlike cultures all going through the Americas, particularly um, all no. of the native peoples, Mayan, Inca, uh, did yeah. the same thing. Right, and they had mm -hmm. no problem making that switch. Incorporating, I had, uh, that's right. Actually, Sydney's father, who ended up a uh, Lakota medicine man as well, a very, very well-known one, uh, started out an Episcopal uh, catechist, hmm. right? So he was the, the senior catechist at the Episcopal church down the road. Uh, what happened was Sydney started having these visions, so he, he said, well, I'll, I'll take him to a, 
a medicine man. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he started having visions. So it wasn't a problem, and it never usually is a problem for the, uh, the indigenous to look at it and see all the similarities and to, to believe sure. that they're worshiping one God, worshiping the same God in a different language. Um, so the best way I've heard it described is that the religious identity of the Lakota is, is on a continuum and they have no problem. So it's a continuum between these, you know, modern Christian theories and their ancient traditions. And, you know, they just kind of, like a wave, they, they use them seamlessly. Yeah. And it really doesn't matter. So that when the missionaries came and said, hey, you know, you want to you wanna take this practice, they, they looked at it and they said, oh, well, Jesus Christ, you know, was hung on a cross. Uh, we give our suffering that, you know, there are self-flagellations, you know, they, that there's a lot of similarity to their, their Sundance. There's a tree in the middle of, the, right. of it, right. um, you know, and they hang themselves off of this tree. Right. It's quite similar. We looked at it, that as being barbaric, but they looked at it seamlessly as being just a, another way to worship God. You know, when people are making films, uh, we've learned this over time, they need money. Yes. And uh, one of the Absolutely. things that... Uh, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. You are... <laughs> one of the ways we hooked up here was that uh, you wanted to do a benefit uh, for your film. And that benefit is actually taking place from 3 to 6 today. In and I believe room. Sydney Has No Horses is going to show up for that yes. event. Yes. He's headed down from Minnesota. Yes. Minnesota. Yes. Yeah. And... Um, so tell us a little bit about what you have planned for today. Because we have only two minutes left. Okay. Uh, but 30 we'll seconds. Have you back on. Uh, thank you. Uh, today we're having a fundraiser uh, to raise funds for the editing of our film. Uh, we have shot a, a total of 60 hours, seven trips to the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Uh, this is going to support uh, the the help to complete the film. Um, you can look us up on sydneyhasnohorses.com and that's S-I-D-N-E-Y. Uh, we are also on Facebook at Documentary in Progress and it's from three to six. We have buffalo chili, cornbread, drinks. Actually, that's a buffalo chili recipe that my wife Paige and I developed. And oh, it's still it's awesome. served here at the Heartland. It is very good, actually. That's, that's what she it's brought It's called red and black bean buffalo corn chili, but they don't always put the red beans in, but we're working on that. <laughs> Anything else you would like to tell us about your film? Oh, just look for it. We are going to do a, a Kickstarter campaign uh, when we get back from the Sundance. Uh, we're actually attending the Sundance uh, uh, July 1st. Wow. And uh, uh, I'll actually be participating as a dancer this time. Um, and uh, But the filming is done. We've completed the filming. Are you the, the tree, too? I have not, I have not there, decided. There's, there's different rules because Sydney is not yeah. Native American. Yeah, I'm allowed this. to chicken. Or, I'm sorry, Salvatore is not Native Salvatore. American. Salvatore. Okay. Okay, well, I want to thank you both. Let's have a big round of applause. We're going to have a little music from the film on the way out. Thank you. We encourage you all to do good in the world. The world needs all the good that you do, and we want to thank everybody who makes this show possible. And we are looking for some volunteers to help do the board downtown, and you would have a great time being involved with us. So, anything to say, Kate? All power to the people. All right, give us some uh, music from Sydney Has No Horses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. He has it. We got, uh, we're still talking here. We got 42 seconds. Oh. And okay then. On to the next thing on WLUW. There we go. Apparently.